Why do people avoid fluoride? I'm Whitney, a registered dental hygienist. Let's talk. First things first, fluoride is not bad, but here are some reasons why people think it's bad. Number one, misinformation about fluoride being toxic. Here's the thing, fluoride can be toxic, but only at significantly high doses, much greater than those used in dental care products or in water fluoridation. The concentrations of fluoride in toothpaste, mouth rinses, and fluoridated water are carefully regulated to be safe and effective for dental health. The toxicity is in the dose. Toxic levels of fluoride would be nearly impossible for any of us to encounter. I do have a video all about toothpaste toxicity explaining how an adult would need to eat, consume, really ingest four to seven tubes of toothpaste in one sitting for it to be toxic. Everything is toxic at a certain dose. If there was too much oxygen in the air, our lungs wouldn't be able to handle it. The oxygen, which benefits us usually, helps us breathe. If there's too much, it's actually bad for us. I'll link my toxic toothpaste video below if you'd like to learn more. And I also have a video all about water fluoridation, about fluoride in water. Fun fact, fluoride is naturally found in most public water. There is an optimal level of fluoride in water to effectively fight against tooth decay, and some communities add fluoride to reach this optimal level, whereas others actually remove fluoride if the natural level is too high. That's something most people don't realize. Everyone is always so concerned about them adding fluoride. Just know that they also remove fluoride too. And to encounter fluoride toxicity from water, an adult would need to drink, ready for this, 120 gallons of water at one time within one sitting. This equals to about 1900 glasses of water. You would need to drink almost 2000 glasses of water for the fluoride to be toxic. It's actually impossible because you would die from the water itself, all fluoride aside. Your kidneys would not be able to flush through 120 gallons of liquid. The water itself would get you way before the fluoride would get you, you know? I'll link both those videos of mine below if you want to learn more. Next, number two, misinformation about fluoride causing cancer. After extensive research over several decades, no connection between fluoride and cancer has been found. The extensive body of international scientific evidence, along with many years of practical experience in the United States and other countries, has shown that fluoride is both safe and effective in community water fluoridation and in toothpaste when used as directed. Again, used as directed means brushing your teeth and then spitting it out. It doesn't mean eating five tubes of toothpaste every morning before breakfast. Number three, misinformation about fluoride causing a low IQ. Studies have demonstrated that the IQ scores of adolescents and adults who lived in fluoridated communities during their infancy and childhood are comparable to those individuals from non-fluoridated communities. There is no link between IQ scores and fluoride intake. Some people are still pointing to a research review that suggested lower IQ scores in children being caused by fluoride exposure. However, several factors undermine this claim, and I will link all the information below. Firstly, the review did not establish a cause and effect relationship. It merely summarized findings from various dissimilar studies. None of these studies tracked children into adulthood. Additionally, the authors of the review noted significant limitations in the studies they examined, stating that some had serious deficiencies that restricted the reliability of their conclusions. They emphasized the need for further research to learn more about other influences on test scores, such as nutrition, school quality, and exposures to contaminants like lead. Correlation without causation was happening in this review. Number four, misinformation about fluoride toothpaste making teeth yellow because it oxidizes teeth. So fluoride does not oxidize tooth enamel. When fluoride binds to your enamel, it's actually a mineralization enhancement where fluoride ions replace some of the hydroxide ions, the mineral compound that tooth enamel is made of. You have hydroxyapatite in your teeth. It's always there. And when fluoride interacts with it, it forms fluorapatite. This new compound, fluorapatite, is more resistant to acid attacks from bacteria in the mouth. Acid is what leads to cavities, so it's preventing the demineralization of teeth and promoting remineralization. Fluoride toothpaste is not making your teeth yellow. If anything, it's making them more strong in acidic environments so they won't turn yellow. Also, some dental products that contain fluoride also include whitening agents, such as peroxide, to help reduce surface stains and maintain the natural color of your teeth. Over time, whether you're using fluoride toothpaste or not, teeth sometimes naturally 
naturally appear more yellow. As we age, the outer layer of enamel wears down and it exposes the dentin, which is a yellow tinted material underneath the enamel. So this is false. Fluoride does not oxidize with enamel and it doesn't make them yellow. Lastly, number five, another reason why people think fluoride is bad is because of dental fluorosis. Dental fluorosis is a condition that can occur during childhood when a child is exposed to excessive high levels of fluoride. It's usually related to kids swallowing too much toothpaste, eating lots of toothpaste daily, like globs and globs of it, or overuse of prescription supplements when a child already receives adequate fluoride from other sources. So like if you get prescribed a fluoride supplement to give your kid, but you have well water or something that isn't city water, like we said earlier, fluoride is naturally occurring in most water. Just always be sure to get the levels checked if you can't find your area's fluoridated levels online to make sure your kid isn't getting any more than they need. But again, fluorosis is a cosmetic issue. It doesn't hurt, it's not bad. It just will sometimes make the teeth have some bright white spots or even brownish spots. Sometimes you can barely see it. It's extremely rare to have severe fluorosis. Regardless, fluorosis itself may even make teeth stronger and more resistant to tooth decay because there's so much fluoride that has affected the teeth. Again, it's more of just a cosmetic issue usually. It's not a reason to stop using fluoride. It's just something to be aware of, again, to use as directed. So just be aware and always watch your kids when they brush their teeth. Make sure they aren't eating or using more than the recommended rice-sized smear amount or pea-sized amount of toothpaste daily. In all, the benefits of fluoride in preventing tooth decay and strengthening tooth enamel are well supported by numerous health organizations globally, including the World Health Organization, Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and the American Dental Association. These benefits have been confirmed through decades of scientific research and public health results. If you prefer not to use fluoride for personal or health reasons, there are alternative products available, such as those containing nanohydroxyapatite and or xylitol, which also promote dental health, but work differently than fluoride. I'll link those videos in mine below as well. But if you are really concerned about fluoride, my best advice is to always discuss with your dentist and or your dental hygienist, for they can provide you tailored advice based on your specific dental health needs. They know your mouth best. These myths around fluoride often arise from a combination of misinformation, misunderstandings, and the complex nature of scientific communication. Sometimes preliminary scientific findings are misinterpreted or taken out of context. For example, studies showing toxic effects of fluoride at high doses may lead people to incorrectly assume that all levels of fluoride are harmful. This misinformation can spread widely before it's corrected or clarified. And in this digital age, misinformation spreads rapidly online. Social media platforms allow information, whether accurate or not, to be shared widely with little to no oversight. Blogs, forums, and social networks can amplify unverified claims and the repetition of such claims can lend them an unwarranted air of credibility. Personal stories can be powerful and compelling, even if they don't represent the broader reality. If someone believes that fluoride caused a particular health issue for them or someone they know, they might share that story contributing to the myth. And lastly, without a strong background in science, it can be challenging to differentiate between credible scientific studies and pseudoscience. This can lead to public confusion on what to believe, especially if the pseudoscience confirms existing biases or fears. Because of all this, myths about health and science can gain significant traction and are often difficult to dispel. So always check your sources and check the scientific literacy of those sources. And I hope this video helped you. Please like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications if it did. Share this with someone that you think it might help. And a quick shout out to the Teeth Talk Patreon members and the YouTube members here supporting this channel and supporting dental health awareness. If you want to join the fight in making sure evidence-based dental health information is being shared online, become part of our Teeth Talk community. The links to join are in the description box below. And until then, I'll see you on Instagram at Teeth Talk Girl. Peace, love, and teeth.